from Batemans Bay. How do you end up from the Philippines to Batemans Bay? Yeah. Um. So, uh, five years ago, my mom um sponsored me to come to Australia, and then on a student visa, and I did my masters for that one. Most of the people I've spoken to who've come from Southeast Asia, yeah. uh, it is them that have sponsored their parents to come. But yeah. in, in your instance, your parents have yeah. sponsored you to come. How did yeah. that come uh, Because around? my mom met um, an, uh, an Aussie guy. He passed away two mm. years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were really close. And he was like, oh, your children are really like smart. They, they, they have like better life in, the, um, in Australia. So he's, he was like, we can just like sponsor because my uh, sponsor them so that they can come here and see how it goes. If it if they like it, then they can stay here, and then if they don't, they can come back to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we've got some sort of a, a lunch or a dinner or a party. Oh, set this up is here. this is what it usually looks like every day. Look, every day. Yeah, my mom likes to change things up, but she likes it like it. She, she wants it to be pleasing so she sets it up she changes stuff but then it would always be is it, it looks beautiful yeah. is that a filipino thing or to a mother thing it's it's a mom thing yeah <laughs> she just wants everything pretty <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right beautiful so you came out here you did your masters in what uh business administration okay yeah. you'd already done your undergrad in the philippines yeah i did um management accounting in the philippines mm -hmm. yeah and then did my master's here mm. and then and you came to Batemans Bay because your your mother's husband who sadly passed away yeah. just last year I believe yeah just a year ago um he was living in Batemans Bay this was yeah. his home yeah um he used to live in Maria which is 30 minutes from Batemans Bay and then he got like a, he was para, uh, he became paraplegic mm. so he needed to move to a place which is near the hospital Okay. So they used to live just right across Batemans Bay Hospital. Mm, mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that he, <laughs> he's passed. Like How do you it. feel now that he's not here? How does your mum feel about staying here in Australia? Or does she think, oh, now it's time to go back home because I came because of him? Or mm. how has it changed? Well, it, it feels empty because we were really close to him. But then because he brought us here... We wanted to make him prouder and then just like, oh, we got to do this one to like pay back. Well, we weren't able to pay him back with the expenses that he spent on us. But at least we know that, um, oh, I'm already working as an accountant now. So he would be really happy for me. Mm -hmm. So just stuff like, um, what if uh, what if this happens? Would he be proud? Mm. So that's what. I'm always thinking. So that's why I'm staying here and trying to do my best mm, to mm. pay back for all the effort mm -hmm. that, they, um, that they gave us to bring us here. Well, I'm sure I'd be very proud. And <laughs> Thank you. If at any point that you need to go back, you know, you yeah. need to follow your heart throughout yeah. your life. And you turn 30 tomorrow, I Yeah, believe. 30. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Is there a, a man in your life? Um, or a woman in your life? No, not right now. <laughs> Just enjoying life. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And I have a daughter. Okay. I'm a single mom. Okay. Yeah, and she's nine, okay. turning ten next year. What's her name? Uh, gray. Like gray. the color. Gray. Oh, gray. Yeah. Oh, wow. And do you speak? Uh, Visaya. We're from the middle, um, middle of the Philippines. Yes. So it's like Visayan region. Okay. How many languages are there in the Philippines? 176. Okay. Yeah, about about that. <laughs> is yours one of the more popular ones? Yeah, it's the more most popular. So there's Tagalog, which is the main language, and then the second one would be Bisaya, which okay. is our language. Uh -huh. Okay, and so accounting is your thing and business management. Yeah. Where are you working here in Batemans Bay? Um, just in town. Mm -hmm. Did you find it hard to get a job? Uh, yeah, at first it was really difficult because like the competition is really like fierce. <laughs> So especially with accounting, so there's a lot of like accountants here, and then just just out of luck, um, the accountancy for accounting accounting firm in town were looking for someone, and then I was just just trying my luck, mm. and then I got accepted. Mm. Mm. That's great. So um, 
I um I work for BSP Advisory in town. It has like branches, three branches, Aladala, Batemans Bay, and Maruya. Mm. And then most of them, well, the ones on site are like Aussies. Mm. So I'm the only Filipino one. Mm. But then they hire um, offshore um, employees in the Philippines. Yes. And they have like a couple of them. and But they're all living in Manila. Manila. Yeah. So does your mother work? Yeah, she works at a fish and, uh, fish and chips owned by a Filipino. Mm -hmm. So they're all Filipinos there. Now, if I go to, into a Filipino fish and chip shop, Will they spice it up with some Filipino something or others? They'd spice it up with Filipino smile. Oh, <laughs> good line. Yeah. Okay. And their like liveliness. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's nothing different with food, no. but then it's cooked with um, love and then it's served with yeah. smile. Presumably you left friends behind and a, oh, a, yeah. a whole lifestyle mm. behind. Was oh, it difficult? It, it was like, it took like a total turn because I was living in the city, which was really busy. There's traffic, there's like noise, everything. And then like buildings too. When I moved to Batemans Bay, there's none of those. Now let's just pause for a minute. <laughs> yep, can't hear a thing. <laughs> and you're in a little area here called Bait Haven, which yeah. is a few minutes south. And I gather from looking around at the homes here they are residents. They doesn't. It's not the same sort of holiday. Yeah, not holiday people. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Which is, I think, great for you because mm. you become part of that community. Yeah, you get to interact with people. Mm. But as you say, a very big difference mm. going from the yeah. city of Cebu to the little town of Batemans Bay. Yeah. And uh, and mm -hmm. the shops close here at five p.m. In the Philippines, it closes at ten p.m. Yes. Malls closes, like big malls, they close really late at night. Mm -hmm. mm. That's one thing I miss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how's your daughter adjusting to school life in Australia? Oh, she loved it. Yeah. She, she really loves it. She loves her friends. She loves going to school mm. she, because I work really early, like 8.30. So I drop her off at 8 and then school starts at 9. And then I'd be telling her, oh, we can just like ask grandma to drive you so that you're not too early. And then she'd be like, oh, no, my friends are there. It's fine. <laughs> then she doesn't want to skip school. Mm. Even if she's sick, she'd be like, oh, I don't want to miss my friends. Mm. So I'd be like, okay. Well, that might change, but maybe it yeah. won't. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully. Uh, well, now she's enjoying it. So. <laughs> and academically, is she totally oh, fine? At first, it was really difficult because... Even though we speak English at home, mm. um, aside from the Bisaya, so we um, it's difficult for her to like understand Aussie accent because we're so used to like American English in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So it took her a while to adjust, mm. but then after she she's already she has the Aussie accent now and she can't understand my accent. <laughs> so I'd be like, oh okay, yeah. <laughs> From time to time, I speak Bisaya just so it doesn't like she doesn't lose it. Mm. Yeah, so she can still understand when my me when my mom and me are talking, mm. but then she can't like fully respond in Bisaya. Is it important for you that she grows up knowing her the language of her birth? Well, yeah, because it's her roots, and from time to time we would come back to like Cebu to the Philippines mm. and then it would be nice for her to like understand um, people when they're talking to her because mm. my mom's like sisters or my my uh, my aunties my relatives some of them can't speak like full English so at least she can like talk mm. to them even if it's not like the main language that they use has she and you been back since coming here no not really COVID's gotten in the way yeah of that. like that's two three years of covid mm. so we were just like oh, it's too expensive still we just save up money and then we go when it's like cheaper flights mm. yeah cheaper uh, to yeah, have the vacation. flights are so expensive aren't yeah they? it's crazy, crazy. <laughs> so have a think the philippines and australia what would you say are some of the biggest differences and which differences do you like and which differences don't you like well the main difference is that is food so we love rice every breakfast lunch dinner rice but then for like 
here in Australia, it's very minimal that you get to eat rice. So there's like, oh, you get, yeah, you chip. There's chips, there's mashed potatoes. I want rice with my steak. <laughs> and then I just got used to it, but um, it's, it's, uh, it's really different, the, the mm -hmm. food, yeah. So you would prefer to have rice if you were well, given the option? Well, not anymore. Because oh, really? I got used to, um, there's some like food that goes well with rice. Like I can't eat it without rice. Mm. But then now that I've been living here for like five years, so I get to eat like Aussies do. Mm. I, I eat my, because usually in the Philippines, it's like well done steak. Mm. But then now I can get to eat medium, medium mm. steak. So <laughs> yeah, there's like change in that. Well, our diet has changed quite a bit too. Yeah, that's the thing about Australia. They're very diverse with like food now. Mm. So it's really good to like get to enjoy different um, food variety. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, when I was at school, just to give you an idea, yeah. there were two people I, I knew in my whole year of about 150 <laughs> who were from a country other than Australia. <laughs> yeah. They were both Greeks. Oh. And they would come and they'd have their lunch mm. and it was like, oh, put that away, that stinks, you know. Yeah. That was what I grew up with, very white Anglo yeah. schooling. I think it's so much more interesting for kids growing up today. Yeah, that's true because um, every time I pack my daughter lunch, her lunch box, her, fr her Aussie friends would like, oh, what are you having? Can we share? So I would pack like heaps of stuff there, like Filipino <laughs> food, just so she can share it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. because they're very open now. Yeah. Because I know like, I've read about articles, kids getting discriminated, bringing like their own um, food. Yes. But then my daughter, her um, friends from school, they all look forward to her lunch boxes. Has she experienced any what would call bullying at school? Um, there would be like at times, but then it's not like as severe as I would have expected it mm. because times have changed. Yes. They're more accepting now and yes. then the parents are more like open. Have you found yourself any prejudice in the study or work environment or government departments or? Not really with my experience because when I did a study in um, Canberra, they were like full of international students. Mm. So it's all mixed. And then they're like, oh yeah, you're from Philippines. Yeah, you can join us. And then even with work, they have like Filipino staff mm. um, working from the Philippines. Yeah. So they know the culture. Yeah. So there's respect. Mm, yeah. So Batemans Bay, are there other Filipinos? Oh, there's like heaps of Filipinos Is that right? here. Yeah, a lot. Wow. If you come to the party tomorrow, you'd see Filipinas. I just might have to. So we're talking about some of the maybe differences that you've discovered. Yeah. Some of them you like, some of them maybe you don't like so much. Any Anything else that you've found oh, about Australia and um, Philippines? Also, um, education. The way I was taught, um, the, the way I studied in the Philippines is different from uh, compared to here. Because in the Philippines, there's always like exams, like weekly exams, um, quarterly exams, just exams all the time. And then you get assignments, projects all the time as well. But then when I studied here, it's just like, oh yeah, you, you need help with anything. They, they're more accommodating, more helpful. Mm -hmm. And then um, the modules that they do are, um, they make it easier for you to finish it, to complete it. 
-hmm. and then there's always like student assistants that can help you with anything mm. that wasn't really that much available in the philippines okay you survive on your own yeah yeah that's there's like too much pressure with studies in the philippines mm -hmm. and that's the same thing that i noticed with my daughter yes so there's like oh yeah they they learn by playing uh -huh. it's like what playing we don't play we study <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah what about what about some of your hobbies or or interests are they are they related to being in australia or are there some things from the philippines that you've carry close to your heart that you continue to yeah. do here oh uh, main thing was um trekking so i used to do a lot of trekking in the philippines which we call uh, bush walking <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then the americans call it trekking yeah <laughs> so um i i do a lot of bush walking here yeah and then you're allowed to call it trekking by the way oh okay i wasn't correcting <laughs> no that's <it's> fine <laughs> because i get to uh i i'm used to calling it bush walking as well now and um the the sister of my mom's partner that passed away she introduced me to bush walking because yeah. she was like she was very worried that i might get bored here uh -huh. and might want to go home so she was like here you can join these groups and then like walk with them and then i was like yeah okay and she kept like introducing people to me yeah that's why i was like oh okay i'm gonna join i'm gonna join okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. well you will never run out of places to bushwalk yeah. in australia it's really long even in this region mm. hey there there is just so many national parks yeah i just think it's one of the the richest things we have in this state yeah in our country oh yeah that's really it's just really all the good. yeah the bushland it's just so wonderful and you're sure. quite near to the the great dividing range here yeah. so you can get up in the hills oh yeah yeah and i do camping as well that's one hobby that i picked up here yeah, lovely mm. okay cool weekend camping with my daughter uh -huh. yeah. so it's sounding like that you're happy here that you have a great life here i'm mm. hoping this isn't just for the camera no <laughs> what have you struggled with oh um i struggled with my visa during covid because um after my master's i was supposed to like apply for um, permanent residency and then covid hit immigration closed their applications and i was like left with nothing to do i was like oh should i go back it's too expensive to stay here on another visa so i was like okay let's try another year and then another year <laughs> so it just kept like adding more years mm. and then i was like okay if it doesn't work then it's not for me mm. but then the government release um other opportunities for like accountants in regional areas mm. and they were like if, if you stay there for one year working then we're gonna sponsor you okay yeah which is happening right now so mm. i was like oh got his his ways yes, yeah yeah but you're a bit anxious there for a <laughs> yeah, time yeah and covid made me more anxious because i was like staying at home doing nothing i was like oh what do i do mm. so that's the main concern that i had back then mm. Now you mentioned god australia is not a very yeah. religious country yeah. that would be a difference for yeah. you yeah that's that's true have you found a is there a fellowship of filipino people that you oh, spend yeah. time with um we go to like church on sundays yeah because um there was also like um i forgot if he was like uh he was before uh he was a priest or something he was filipino but then filipinas here are very active in the church yes so they like do um morning tea at in the, the Catholic church, church? yeah yes. yeah so we help out mm. yeah well that's part of your culture as well isn't it yeah we're very yeah. like it's actually very hard to separate religion and culture i think yeah that's true a lot of cultures in the world they're really the same mm. even christmas season like it's always god that's the center of mm. the the festivities but then mm. here it's just like christmas yeah <laughs> so when do you start christmas do you go all the whole month of december like the uh, indonesians do not just the whole month of december it's like september oh my so God. september one because it's the burr months oh. so september october november december it's all christmas up until end of january just right before valentine's day god yeah <laughs> well, so it would be like 
Christmas songs in malls, like blasting through the speakers. Christmas decorations would be out. It's like heavy Christmas decorations too. Outside, inside the house. Like it's big party for like a big event for Filipinos. Do you think Filipinos know how to celebrate better than Aussies? Probably. So that's yeah. a gift you bring? Yeah. We bring like um, happiness in, um, in like uh, parties. Mm. But then it gets too loud because mm. we speak loudly as well. Mm -hmm. So some Aussies would be like, ah, oh, here are the Filipinas, the loud Filipinas. So some, some get annoyed, but some would appreciate how um, exciting we can be at parties. Mm. Mm. So there's like crazy dancing and singing, always singing. I'm an active member of the multicultural group. Being my mom, one of the f um, founding members of the multicultural group in Yoruba Dala and South Coast. So she did it with Jan, which, which was um, the main person. And then because I'm my mom's daughter, I get to be, I need to be active as well. So they like tap on me to host events for multicultural, the multicultural group. So there's like Greek, the Thais, Filipino, Chinese, and then there's like Africans. And then there's like heaps of like people. And then there's like also like Aussies. They also come to our events. Oh, yeah, so there's mix. So people from everywhere would bring something from their own country mm -hmm. and then get to share it with um, the people in the... You make food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's food. <laughs> food from different countries. Yeah. So there would be performances from, uh, from countries. So Filipinos, there would be like dances, two dances usually from Filipinos because there's a lot of like culture in the Philippines. And then there's the Thai people and then Indonesians. And then last event, we had new ones, which was um, the Africans. They also like, they were like a family. Mm -hmm. So they dance as a family. Mm -hmm. And then there were also like Brazilians yep. um, during last one, yeah. Yep. It's like introducing yourself to other people's culture because Australia is a very diverse country with a lot of um, migrants coming from different countries so if you get to see more of each country you get to appreciate their culture and their tradition mm. so oh this is like indonesian food it's really nice so mm. you get to see them and you get to like um get to know the person serving the food as well mm -hmm. so it's like a sense of belongingness for for us acceptance for us that Oh, we're getting accepted in this community. So we're enjoying it here. We're staying. So we get to, um, because we get to, uh, we get to be accepted. We tend to bring out more of us mm. to bring, to help the community become like better. And know that there's like a Filipino community in, in Sydney or in Canberra. But then I haven't seen or I haven't heard much of like multi multicultural events mm. there. But here it's like we get to celebrate who we are and we um, share it with other people mm. who also like um, happy who they are. Mm. Yeah. And obviously family is a very big yeah, value it's a, for it's you. It's a big thing. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned your mother's partner and mm. passing and that you wanting to be here to do him proud yeah. and that he might in some way see your family yeah. grow up and doing the things that he imagined that you would mm. um, so that's a very loyal commitment to family yeah i i noticed that um with like aussie families like full aussie families like because usually for kids when they turn 18 they leave um their home mm. to be independent but then with filipinos it's like a big house with like families my brother was living his wife was living with us with a kid with their um daughter and then i was living with my mom with my daughter and then my sister as well so it's just like you get to see them every day and once they they're ready to move on their own like oh it's getting like 
too crowded here. Mm. But then they moved to New Zealand, so that's why they move out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what do you hope for your family? What do you hope for your daughter? Um, I hope that my daughter stays respectful of me and family. And I hope that she grows up to be like a loving, caring um, person. And then from my family, I just hope we get together. Like, um, go uh, be closer to each other. Because, yeah, it's a big thing for us, for families. So, I just like, I wish I can see them often. Like, not a couple of hours away, like, through playing. I wish I can see them as convenient as it as it could be, yeah.